I've been using the 11 inch N4 iPad Pro for a little over two months now and being a first time iPad owner, the new slim design, tandem OLED screen, Wi-Fi 6E capability and most recently iPadOS 18 updates which to be honest have caused some serious buzz, got my iPad experience off to a great start but that hasn't been the case for everyone. Some users have complained about their iPads freezing and crashing, their touch screens not working, the displays having clarity problems just to name but a few. In this video, I take you through what it's been like using the M4 iPad Pro over the last two months and if you're still on the fence about getting one, this video will help you make an informed decision. Starting from the outside coming in, the new slim design has been fun to have in hand and at 5.3mm thick, the 11 inch M4 iPad Pro is one of the thinnest devices in the market at the moment and for context, when you put it next to an iPhone, you can clearly see it's almost half the thickness of the iPhone 15 Pro and if you thought that was insane, the 13 inch iPad Pro is way thinner coming in at just 5.1 inches. Now, with such a slim form factor, you might think it would be easy to break, but having given it the classic thumb press and bend test, it's felt quite sturdy, but don't take my word for it. For proper durability test, check out the video Jeremy Rig Everything Did. In terms of color, the one I went with is the silver one, but there's also a space black colored one. From the few times I've used the previous gen models, the design language is more or less the same with rounded edges, same placement of the volume rockers, power button and USB-C port. Telling all of that to just 444 grams makes the M4 iPad Pro easy to use whether it's around the house or at the beach. In saying that, it's got a few changes worth mentioning and starting with the camera, they got rid of the ultra wide camera and in its place came in a bigger cutout for the lighter sensor, which if you looked at from afar, it easily passes as a second camera. While on the subject of the camera, I like that the front camera finally moved to landscape orientation, which was a long overdue change after having it in portrait mode pretty much since the inception of the iPad. When it comes to its immediate accessories, I found it hard to justify getting the Magic Keyboard and the Apple Pencil Pro because of the price and therefore went for the more budget friendly option in the Logitech Combo Touch and the Logitech Crayon. More on them a little later in the video. Moving along, the new Tandem OLED display has been breathtaking especially when consuming 4K content and this is thanks to the two OLED screens stacked on top of each other which results in better brightness and dynamic range. At 1000 nits of max brightness and 1600 nits of peak brightness, it's just bonkers and of all the OLED panels I've used, this one is right up there and that's not all. For an even better experience using it in a bright environment, close to 150 Australian dollars will get you the nano texture variant which puts the reflections at bay. Personally, I don't see the need to buy it but if you've got an extra 150 bucks, absolutely go for it. Now, despite all the amazing features the Tandem OLED brings, the one thing you have to be wary of is burning, which is usually quite common with OLED displays. From a creator's perspective, the wide P3 color gamut has come in clutch when I'm editing my reels and customizing my thumbnails to suit my style. Speaking of customizing things to suit different styles, I like that you can customize how your display looks on iPadOS 18 and by simply holding on to the screen then clicking on customize, you'll be able to change the look of your icons and whether you want large or small icons, a dark, light or tinted theme, you've got it right at your fingertips and if those are a bit too complicated for you, you can simply tap on automatic and the theme will automatically change depending on the time of day. The widgets and home screen are also customizable which gives you the ability to deck it out however you want. In terms of refresh rate, the M4 iPad Pro is usually anywhere between 10 to 120 Hz depending on what's happening on the screen. Going deeper underneath the tandem OLED screen, we get the new M4 chip which caught everyone by surprise since everyone was expecting the M3 chip. The M4 chip is a 3 nanometer chip which is a lot smaller compared with the 5 nanometer chip of the previous gen iPad Pro. In terms of specs, I chose the 256 base model that comes with a 9 core CPU, a 10 core GPU and 8 gigs of RAM. Now, even though those specs are not flattering, compared to my M1 MacBook Pro, it blows it off the water and you can see that from these benchmarks I did on Geekbench, which begs the question, is the M4 iPad Pro the perfect replacement for your laptop? If you'd ask me, I'd say yes, and that's because once you add in your iPad Pro keyboard of choice, then 
and the power they now come with which allows them to pretty much do everything the top line laptops do not to mention the new iPad OS 18 that makes the M4 iPad Pro even more interesting with apps like SharePlay which comes in handy when helping out your family with tech support. On the flip side, while iPadOS is robust and quite intuitive, it's not as versatile as macOS or Windows, therefore some professional software, particularly in areas like software development, engineering or advanced graphic design might not be available or fully functional on iPadOS. How it handles files has also been an issue for many iPad users and for the content creators, most editing apps are usually the watered down versions of the ones you'd find in a fully fledged laptop or desktop computer. The iPad and laptop debate aside, a deeper look into some of the features would be the perfect segue to talk about iPad OS. For most people, the crown jewel would definitely be the customization, but since I've already gone through it, we'll dive deeper into SharePlay and tell you what, this will be a game changer for me since I'm the tech support guy for family and helping out mom and dad would be a lot simpler. I mean, tapping and drawing on the screen to give them precise direction and if they still can't get the hang of it, being able to remotely control their devices will be a major determining factor whether they'll still be sticking with the iPhones that got them or going back to the good old brick phones they find a lot easier to use. Another feature that's had a quality of life improvement was in the calculator app and it now looks like a complete package whether you want to convert currencies or measurement units, do basic math, scientific equations or solve some tough math equations in math notes, you've got it all in the calculator app. For instance, back in my high school days, I wouldn't know how to solve pi squared times 4 and by simply writing it up in math notes, it spits out the answer immediately and the best part is, that's just scratching the surface. You can now solve deadly equations even when you throw in variables like y's and x's and it does it for you pretty easy. Apple Intelligence is another iPad OS feature I look forward to exploring with features like writing tools, memory movie and the new improved Siri top of my list. Moving along, using the Logitech Combo Touch keyboard and Logitech Crayon in tandem with the M4 iPad Pro has made my iPad experience over the last two months something to write home about and starting with the keyboard, my biggest selling point was its build quality and price. Compared with the Magic Keyboard, I like how the slight lip it has provides some extra cushioning whether it's heading to the floor screen or edge fast. In terms of features, it comes with plenty and whether you want to take a screenshot or get into focus mode, the difference between execution and command is just a key press. As for the Logitech Crayon, I'm not an illustrator or graphic designer so it works just fine but for those who need all the next gen features like bringing up the different tool features, rotating the barrel to get a variety of angles on your brush or the pinch for different tactile sensations, then I'd advise you to get the Apple Pencil Pro. The one gripe I have with the Apple Pencil Pro is, for you to take advantage of those features, you'll have to get the M4 iPad Pro since those features are not supported on the previous gen models. Having talked about one of the grabs of the M4 iPad Pro ecosystem, we might as well take a deeper dive into some of the other reported issues brought up by different users and starting with touchscreen issues, some users reported on the Mac Rumors forum they had issues scrolling, closing apps and selecting things on the screen. So like I always do, I did some digging to find possible solutions from the thread and after combing through the comments, restarting the iPad worked the magic for a particular user but for others, even after returning the faulty one and getting a new one, they kept experiencing the same issue. Now, if you'd ask me, after doing some extensive research on multiple platforms, I couldn't find a conclusive answer and therefore my biggest guess would be something to do with the software. Another major issue reported by a decent number of people in the Apple community page was freezing and crashing and after running through the comment section, the closest thing to a solution was this user explaining how they ran benchmarks and hit a little over 11,000 on the multi-score when the usual score for the iPad is around 14,000. Again, if you'd ask me, I wouldn't be able to pinpoint the issue. If anyone at Apple or the chat has an idea, please let us know. That aside, personally, I haven't experienced any issues. If you've encountered any other problems, feel free to let us know in the comments. Moving along, the camera, mic and speakers have also been fun to use and I must say, moving the camera from portrait to landscape has made those zoom meetings and FaceTimes appear normal as the few times I used the previous gen iPads, the image remained pinned on to the edges. In terms of specs, nothing has changed from the previous gen version and it's still a 12 megapixel camera with an aperture of 1.8 but the major difference like mentioned earlier is the LiDAR scanner which took the camera slot of the ultra wide lens. 
Another addition to the camera setup I've enjoyed over the last two months is the True Tone Flash which has come in clutch when scanning documents or receipts. As for the microphone, the sound quality is good enough and the few times I've used it for Zoom meetings, it's relayed my audio perfectly. Here's a sound test. This is the sound test of the mic quality of the M4 iPad Pro. Let me know what you guys think. While on the subject of sound, we might as well talk about the speakers and tell you what, for something this slim, the sound quality is quite impressive. Talking of impressive, the battery is exactly that and you'd think with this slim form factor it would be smaller but it's slightly bigger than the previous gen coming in at 31.29 watt hours compared with the 28.65 hours of the last gen. On average, after a full day of use it's floated in the 20 to 30 percentile which if you'd ask me is quite impressive. After two months with the M4 iPad Pro, I must say this device stands out as a versatile and functional accessory to your main computer, blending the productivity of a laptop with the flexibility of a tablet, therefore making it the perfect accessory for remote work and travel. The Blazing Fast M4 chip will make every task feel effortless and whether you're typing up documents, browsing the internet, editing photos in Lightroom Classic or just watching a movie, the experience is silky smooth. As for iPadOS 18, in my opinion, it's breathed a new lease of life to the iPad experience and with all those new features sitting on an exceptional battery, you'll easily power through a full day of intense use without breaking a sweat. But something that will make you break a sweat is the price and to put that into perspective, a 13 inch M3 MacBook Air will cost you less than an 11 inch M4 iPad Pro which by the way, you'll have to spend a little bit extra to get the keyboard and Apple Pencil and it doesn't stop there. The normal Apple Pencil isn't compatible with the M4 iPad Pro because of a few changes in the structure of mechanics so you'll need the Apple Pencil Pro which is even more expensive. Alternatively, you could go for third party manufacturers like Logitech or ESR and get accessories like the Logitech Combo Touch and Logitech Cramp but the bottom line is you'll still be spending something a little bit extra for the full iPad experience. Now, for the average consumer, getting the M4 iPad Pro won't be necessary. A 10th gen iPad would be a solid pick, but for the illustrators and graphic designers out there, any of the M1 iPad Pros would do just fine. Well, there you have it, peeps. I hope you enjoyed and found this video helpful. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, share and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. Check out this video to see the full review of the Logitech Combo Touch. Until then, people of the internet, I'm signing out. See you on the next one.